All right, welcome to lesson 25B. This is implicit differentiation day two. So we are gonna continue talking about implicit differentiation, which you've been working with now for a day. Um, and unlike yesterday where the implicit differentiation was the only thing you were really having to deal with, along with you know product rule um, or quotient rule, what we're looking at today is what happens when you've got an additional chain rule on top of implicit differentiation. Now remember, implicit differentiation already is technically uh, a version of the chain rule. So really what we're looking at are implicit equations where we actually have a nested chain rule where one of those chain rules is sort of more recognizable to you as sort of a composition of equations, whereas the second part of the chain rule is the actual implicit differentiation. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna start similar to how I started yesterday, where we're not gonna actually deal with an entire equation first, we're just gonna deal with some expressions that illustrate what I'm referring to here. All right, so we're gonna begin with uh, differentiate with respect to the indicated variable. So again, this is very similar to what we did at the beginning of yesterday's lesson. So for this first example, we're gonna find the derivative with respect to x of sine of x squared plus three y. So what we should recognize here is that we're not just taking the sine of x or the sine of y. We're not taking the sine of a single variable. It's the sine of more than a single variable. And so what that means is, just like before, we would want to look at this as sort of a u equaling x squared plus 3y. And our outer function is more like the sine of u. I guess I shouldn't let it be a y since we already have a y in there. So our outer function is sine of u. So that means our derivative will be the derivative of the outer function. So the derivative of sine of u is still cosine of u times the derivative with respect to x of u. Now notice I haven't done the implicit differentiation piece at all where I'm multiplying by a dy dx because right now we were just doing the sine of u. So now we can replace that u back with x squared plus 3y. So I've got the cosine of x squared plus 3y times, and now we're going to take the derivative of this expression. And this is now where you're going to see finding the derivative with respect to a different variable. So I've got the derivative of x squared, which is just 2x, plus the derivative of 3y with respect to x. So that's going to be 3 times dy dx. Now I do want you to notice that this expression that I currently have, this is technically of the form a times b plus c. So it's a times the quantity b plus c. And that means I should distribute what's out in front. So this now becomes 2x times the cosine of x squared plus 3y. So I'm going to put 2x times the cosine of x squared plus 3y plus, and then I've got 3 dy dx times that same quantity. So I'm going to put 3 times the cosine of x squared plus 3y times dy dx. And that is the derivative of that expression with respect to x. All right, let's look at another one. We have the derivative with respect to x of cosecant of xy. So again, hopefully we can spot that the xy here serves as our u. So this is really the cosecant of u, and then our u equals x times y. All right, so that means then to find the derivative, first we're doing the derivative of the outer function, so the derivative of cosecant of u is negative cosecant of u cotangent of u times, so again, that was just the derivative of the outer part, times the derivative with respect to x of our u, which is x times y. So now we've got a product rule. All right, so let's go ahead and replace those u's back. So I've got negative cosecant of xy cotangent of xy times, and let's go ahead and put this in green. So now it's the derivative of the product x times y. So that means it's the first 
times the derivative with respect to x of the second plus the second times the derivative with respect to x of the first. So now I've got negative cosecant of xy cotangent of xy times. So now I have x times. Now the derivative of y with respect to x is just going to be 1 times dy dx. There's your implicit. Plus y times the derivative of x with respect to x is just a 1. Let's clean that up a little bit. So I've got negative cosecant of xy cotangent of xy times. So this is just x times dy dx plus y. And then just as you saw in the previous example, this is now again of that same form, a times b plus c. By the way, it's not always going to be that way, but it happens to be that way a lot. So do look for this opportunity to distribute. And the reason we would do that is because, remember, eventually we are solving for dy dx. So we want to be able to get individual terms that contain a dy dx separate from the others. So that's why we would want to distribute here. OK, so now when I distribute, that's going to be a negative x. So negative x cosecant of xy cotangent of xy dy dx. So again, all of that was from multiplying to the first term. Plus, same thing with a y. Oh, in fact, there's a negative there. So I'm going to make that a minus y cosecant of xy cotangent xy. All right, and let's look at one more of these before we move on to a full equation. So I've got the derivative with respect to x of the square root of 2x minus 8y. So once again, we should recognize that the inner equation or the inner expression is 2x minus 8y, so that's our u. And the outer is of the form square root of u, or better known as u to the 1 half. So I'm going to actually rewrite this first as the derivative with respect to x of the quantity 2x minus 8y to the 1 half. I actually want to rewrite it that way first. And remember, you've heard me say that before, that any time we see a radical, generally speaking, we're going to want to rewrite it with a fractional exponent. There will be a few exceptions to that, but not many. All right, so now we can find the derivative. So that means the derivative, it's going to be the derivative of the outer function. So the derivative of u to the 1 half is 1 half u to the negative 1 half. And then times the derivative of the inner part. So oops, times the derivative of the inner part with respect to x. All right, so now I've got 1 half times, I'm going to go ahead and replace my u back with 2x minus 8y to the negative 1 half. And now we're multiplying that with. So the derivative of 2x with respect to x is just 2 minus the derivative of 8y with respect to x will be 8 times dy dx. OK, again, we've got that whole form of a times b minus c, so we should be able to distribute here. So I'm going to have now 1 half times 2, those are just going to cancel to become a 1. So I just get 2x minus 8y to the negative 1 half minus, now 1 half times 8 is going to give me a 4 times 2x minus 8y to the negative 1 half dy dx. OK, so those are some examples that show you implicit differentiation within the chain rule. So now let's go ahead and move on then and take a look at a full equation that involves this. All right, so we're going to try to find dy dx, so find the derivative with respect to x. For this equation here, we have x to the third plus tangent of x squared y equals 8. So just like yesterday, in order to find the derivative of this entire equation with respect to x, we're going to start by taking the derivative 
with respect to x of both sides. So the derivative with respect to x of x cubed plus tangent of x squared y. And that's going to have to equal the derivative with respect to x of the right side, which was just an 8. OK, so now on the left side, we have the derivative with respect to x of x cubed. That's just going to be 3x squared plus. Now we've got the derivative with respect to x of tangent of x squared y. So this right here, once again, we should recognize that this is really the tangent of u, where u is x squared times y. So the derivative of tangent of u is going to be secant squared of u, so secant squared of x squared y, times the derivative of u with respect to x. And then that's going to equal the derivative of 8, which is just a 0. So now we've got 3x squared plus, I've got that secant squared of x squared y times, now the derivative of x squared times y, so we've got the product rule here. So it's going to be the first times the derivative with respect to x of the second plus the second times the derivative with respect to x of the first equals 0. So now we've got 3x squared plus, so I've got this secant squared of x squared y times, now this is going to become x squared times dy dx. Again, you could put the times 1, but what's the point, right? Plus y times the derivative of x squared, that's going to be 2x times y. So I went ahead and just reversed the order there right away. Hopefully you're okay with that. But again, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and then 2x times y, I'm just going to re rewrite the order so that the coefficient comes first, and then the variables are in uh, alphabetical order. Okay, so now I hope you realize or recognize this part right here. Again, we've got that form a times b plus c. So I should distribute here. And again, remember the reason we're doing that is we are trying to solve for dy dx. And that means I have to be able to isolate my dy dx term by itself. So I guess I don't have to say by itself. All right, so now I've got 3x squared plus. Now when I distribute, that's going to become x squared secant squared of x squared y dy dx, so again, all of that's just from distributing, plus, now I'm going to distribute the same thing to the 2xy, so plus 2xy secant squared of x squared y equals 0. So now I've got two terms here that don't have a dy dx in it. I've got this 3x squared, and I've got this plus 2xy secant squared x squared y. So I'm going to move those to the other side, and I'm going to leave the x squared secant squared of x squared y dy dx by itself. So I have x squared times secant squared x squared y dy dx equals, now again I'm going to subtract the 3x squared and subtract the 2xy secant squared of x squared y. And finally I'm going to divide both sides by that factor in front of the dy dx. So finally, we get dy dx equals negative 3x squared minus 2xy secant squared of x squared y all over x squared times secant squared of x squared y. Now there is technically one more thing that we can do, and I would love for you to be able to do it. Notice that in the numerator we do have a common factor of an x, and it's going to be important for us to factor that out so we can divide it with one of those x's from the denominator. So I am going to move up here just so you can see that. So we've got dy dx equals, again if I factor out an x from the numerator, that's going to leave me with a negative 3x minus 2y secant squared of x squared y all over 
x squared secant squared x squared y. So now that x divides out with one of those x's. And we finally get our final answer here. And that's going to be negative 3x minus 2y secant squared of x squared y all over x times secant squared of x squared y. So that is using implicit differentiation to find the derivative of an equation where there's also a chain rule involved. All right, last example. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from what we were just doing in the first part of this lesson. So this is actually just going to be based on the implicit differentiation that you already practiced in the previous lesson. However, the question being asked is a slight new variation of what you've seen before. So find the point or points at which the graph of 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4 equals 0 has horizontal or vertical tangent lines. Now you've heard the question before about horizontal tangent lines and remember horizontal tangent lines are referring to the place where the derivative equals 0. Remember the derivative is the slope of the graph or the slope of the tangent line and if your tangent line is horizontal then the slope must be 0. What we haven't been asked yet, but we are now, is about vertical tangent lines. But remember, with the vertical tangent line, if your tangent line is vertical, then the derivative, the slope, must be undefined. So what we're looking at then for this problem is not only the same question you've been asked before, where does the derivative equal 0, but also where does the derivative give us undefined? for what value of x or values of x would the derivative be undefined. So that's what we're being asked for this problem. So just like before, in order to answer this, we're going to start by finding the derivative. So we need to find the derivative of this whole equation. So that means we're going to find the derivative with respect to x of 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4 equals, and then the derivative with respect to x, of 0. All right, so now we're just going to take the derivative term by term. Again, there's nothing particularly tricky about this one. There's no hidden uh, product rule. There's no quotient rule. There's no additional chain rule. This is just term by term. So the derivative of 4x squared with respect to x, that's just going to give us 8x plus the derivative of y squared is going to be 2y dy dx minus the derivative of 8x, which is just 8, plus the derivative of 4y with respect to x, and that's going to be 4 dy dx. Oop, that d got a little bit lost among the y. There we go. And then plus the derivative of 4, which is a 0. I'm going to put the 0 just to make sure that you see that I did take the derivative of 4. And then the derivative of 0 is also 0. All right, so at this point, notice that we've got two terms containing a dy dx, so I'm going to leave those there. I am going to move the other terms to the other side. So now I've got, on the left side, I'm going to still have my dy, sorry, my 2y dy dx plus 4 dy dx. And on the other side, I will have subtracted an 8x, so minus 8x, and added an 8, so plus 8. And then now I can factor the dy dx out. It's going to give me 2y plus 4 equals negative 8x plus 8. And now I can divide by a 2y plus 4. And I get two, uh, dy over dx equals, now I'm also, uh, I'm, I'll do two separate steps here, negative 8x plus 8 over 2y plus 4. It is going to make it easier for us if we do simplify this a little bit. And I can definitely factor out an 8 from the numerator and a 2 from the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I factor out an 8 from the numerator, in fact, let's make it a negative 8, then that's going to leave me with x minus 1. And in the denominator, if I factor out a 2, that's going to leave me with a y plus 2. And finally, that means I've got dy dx 
equals, now here the 2 cancels out, the 8 drops down to a 4. So I've got dy dx equals negative 4 times x minus 1 all over y plus 2. Now remember, all of that was just to find the derivative. But remember what the original question was. At what point or points on the original uh, curve does this graph have horizontal or vertical tangent lines? So let's start with the discussion about horizontal. So remember, if we want horizontal tangent lines, then that means we're talking about the derivative, f prime, or dy dx, I should say, equaling 0. So that means the derivative we just found, negative 4 times x minus 1 over y plus 2, has to equal 0. And as you've heard me say multiple times, the only way that a fraction can ever equal 0 is if the numerator equals 0. So really, the equation we're solving here is just that. The negative 4 is irrelevant, and we just get x equals 1. So that means we know that this graph is going to have a horizontal tangent line at any point or points where the x-coordinate is 1. So that means our answer is going to be 1 comma something. So now we need to find out the y-coordinate. Now remember, this ordered pair has to lie on the original graph. So that means we have to go back to the original equation. So remember the original equation was 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. And if I now replace all of my x's with a 1, if I now replace all of my x's with a 1, I get this which means now I'm going to have 4 plus y squared minus 8 plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. 4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 4 more. So those constants all end up canceling each other out. And now I'm just left with y squared plus 4y equals 0. And if I factor this, solve by factoring, and now have y times y plus 4 equals 0, which means that y equals 0, or y equals negative 4. But remember, in order to solve for y, we replaced the x with a 1, meaning y only equals 0 and y only equals negative 4 on the original equation when x is 1. So our solutions, or our points, where we know this graph has horizontal tangent lines would be at 1, 0, and at 1, negative 4. So those are the horizontal tangent lines. But remember, we're not done. We are still trying to find vertical tangent lines as well. So remember, if we're looking for vertical, now we're talking about places where the derivative is undefined. Now in order for a derivative, in order for the derivative to be undefined, now we're talking about that denominator being 0. So the equation that we're really solving now is the denominator equal to 0. And that's going to give us y equals negative 2. So just like before, that means we're going to have vertical tangent lines everywhere on the original curve where the y coordinate is negative 2. Now we need to find the x value or values that goes with it. So we're going to substitute negative 2 into the original equation for y. So again, I've got 4 x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. Let's go ahead and replace our y's with a negative 2. All right.
right? So now I've got four, oops, now I've got four x squared. Negative two squared is gonna be a four, so plus four. Minus eight x, I have four times negative two, that's a minus eight, plus a negative four, I'm sorry, plus another four equals zero. And once again, I have four minus eight plus four, those are all gonna cancel each other out. And I'm just left with four x squared minus eight x equals zero. And if I solve this by factoring, then I'm gonna get x equals zero or x equals two. But remember, x only equaled zero or two when y was negative two. So that means we would have vertical tangents at the points zero comma negative two or two comma negative two. All right, yes, there was a lot to that problem. And that's why I'm not giving you very many of these, just one. Okay, so again, overall for this lesson, we took a look at what happens if you are using the chain rule, and then within the chain rule, you've got implicit differentiation, so that's what we focused on today, along with this last example where you saw not only the question about horizontal tangent lines, but also vertical tangent lines. Remember, vertical tangent lines happen when the derivative is undefined, and if your derivative is a fraction, then that will be undefined when the denominator is zero. All right, good luck.